So I remember standing above the cafeteria of my high school and the huge bank of steps going up. And I just had this, like, I think I was a junior, maybe a senior. And I just had this download, just this aha moment of, oh my gosh, I'm waking up. It was my first experience of realizing that I truly am an agent. I am the agent of my life. And then fast forward many, many years, and I was in an Al-Anon meeting. And all of a sudden, I realized that all of the people that I was sitting with, that they were all connected. We were all connected with this divine energy. And it was profound. It was such a beautiful moment for me. And then fast forward a number, actually it wasn't that many more years, and the birth of my second child in the basement of a brownstone in Brooklyn, New York, my <laughs> first home birth. And when Elliot was born with no interventions at all, just outside the birth pool, don't ask why I wasn't in the birth pool, I was outside the birth pool, and I said, I have a baby, I have a baby. And here I am holding the baby, trying not to drop the baby from between my legs. And it was that powerful. I did this. I am an agent of my life. And then fast forward another number of years, I'm standing on top of a perfectly good power pole, a perfectly good telephone pole. How did I get there? After doing a ton of self-development, self-healing, self-discovery, I climbed that power pole. And you know, if you climb the power pole, you got to get off there somehow. I'm not going to stay there forever. I could have climbed back down, but I think that would have been even more difficult. Because getting up, you know, this is the part that that really, this is such a visceral memory for me. That transition from climbing the power pole to getting it's such a small area and there's nothing to hold on to there's nothing to hold on to how am i gonna do this other people have done this you know you can do it your team is cheering you on how am i uh, okay trust i got up and i stood on that power pole and i wasn't gonna climb back down no way i get to jump off the power pole. Yes, I've got all kinds of wires holding me. And I got to jump off. And it was the scariest thing I have ever done in my life. And I cursed a blue streak up there. I was so proud of myself for getting up there. I was so in my fear and just ready to tear through that fear. And I did it. I jumped off that power pole. I was truly an agent of my life and directing my life where I want it to go. Right. Wow. Um, what a story. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of our podcast for today. <laughs> well, how can we match uh, anything past that? You know, I mean, uh, welcome everybody. This is Gina. And this is Don. This is. Uh, with Focus Healthy Family, and this is podcast number 123, and I'll let you introduce. And we're going to call it Jumping Off the Power Pole, because I think that's a great title for this, <laughs> this podcast. Today, we have Helen Gardner-Parks here with us. Um, I don't even know how to introduce you. I'll let you introduce yourself, but she's a friend that I've known forever and have worked with in many capacities, and um, we are so glad we have you on the podcast the first of many future times to yeah, have. So she's been a, a crazy friend of mine for, for quite a while, too. I've enjoyed uh, enjoyed uh, being friends and, and associates with her for some time here, and it, it's great to have you on the, on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really great to be here. I am truly honored. It's It's been a journey to get to where I am, and I... Ah, uh, my goodness. I was first interested in psychology. So I have a degree in psychology and then that melded into my passion for the environment. So I became an eco activist. And then I decided, wow, you know, I really like 
counseling. And so I got into supporting homeless shelters. And then I was really, a tr you know, just compelled to support the kids in the homeless shelters. And so I went back to school. And so I became, I got a master's in education. And then I homeschooled my kids. And then I got into just my own healing journey. And that's what really this is about is all of us, all of us have a healing journey, a healing story to tell. And mine involved being a vegetarian for about 20 years, if not more, and my body falling apart. It was not the right diet for my body at all. And so I started exploring other options and I was converted to a whole foods, unprocessed, eat in alignment with the earth that our cells, our cells come from the earth. So why are we eating products that come from a factory? It makes no logical sense. And so that's been my journey. I became a nutritional therapist and have been practicing that craft, that art for years. And as I have evolved, what I realized is that there are so many pillars to anybody's healing journey. And that a big part of mine has been the spiritual component, has been the claiming calm component. I decided I don't like the word stress reduction hmm. because let's not bring the negative into mm -hmm. our reality, right? Let's claim what we want. What we want is calm. What we want is acceptance. What we want is surrender to what is. So my commitment now, my life now is that every morning I start with X number of minutes. Today it was 21 minutes of breath work. Mm. And I have a program called positive intelligence that I teach. And that, that is crucial to my maintaining what I call a scaffolding so that I have the support that I need to do all the things I do and support all the people I support while also maintaining my sanity, my serenity. So the other piece is truly that I am committed to everyone being able to play. And the way that I live that out in my life every day is that I get on Facebook and I do a cartwheel. Just one. <laughs> I do a cartwheel. Every we love day. your cartwheels. <laughs> she cartwheels everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, on top of a mountain, in Europe, on a boat, wherever I am. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's my story. So right now I am involved in a few different things in terms of, you know, career. And one of those is as a breathwork facilitator. So I am here for breathwork and I am also a positive intelligence coach. So I teach classes around that. And I love, I just love this work because it is about healing, healing the pieces that, that don't get addressed by, by just focusing on the nutrition and the nutrition is powerful. And I have so many um, I also work as a health coach and I have, I see so many people who are doing all the right things and they're just not getting the results because mm -hmm. they're not accessing their calm. Mm -hmm. They're not claiming their serenity. I love that. Claiming your calm. I just, yeah, because you want to reduce stress, but then you're just putting stress out into the environment. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and one of the things that, you know, as I'm with what I, the program I'm in with Dr. Smith is, you know, I always tell people that, you know, they come here, they come become aware of something going on in their body and they want that to change. You know, they want to mm -hmm. get into a better place, better nutrition, all of that. And what I have to, my job then is to help them to realize they also have to become aware here. And that's kind of what you're talking about. Finding your calm is really starting to get this in the right place because this thing here is running this thing here, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah and telling that's... yourself the wrong messages. It doesn't matter if you're eating as good as you possibly can. You're. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Your, your Jenny Craig's and all your weight programs are just a roller coaster ride basically because they're not addressing mm -hmm. the, the mindset, the, the, the thought process that goes along with weight loss. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I know for myself as a recovering eating disorder, disordered eating person, that what I was always chasing with my overeating and my binging was th there was a hole, there was a hole in my soul. And I was trying to fill it with food, I was trying to fill it. And, and it won't be filled. It won't be filled. And so that's, that's the spiritual piece. You know, we get to have a connection with a higher power, whether that's a school bus or God on a cloud, whatever it is, there's something greater, something more powerful than, than we, the little people on this planet, you know, it's, it's called uh spiritual putty is what it is. Yeah. Fills in that hole. Putty. Oh, spiritual Fills putty. Yeah. yeah. I need some of that. I've been put, doing. Put some spiritual paint over the top of it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can attest to the pro some of the programs Helen's been involved in. First, um, the nutritional program I participated with you. It it was more, it was about learning to eat the whole foods and, and clean, doing a detox of, of your body, but also about forgiving yourself if you didn't do it just right. Yeah. And, um, and then the positive intelligence program. Uh, yeah, that was a game changer for all of us. I know I was part of your first uh, coaching team after you did the training, I think, Helen. And uh, we're still going strong connecting with each other because that's, to me, the big component of that, right? You can learn about nutrition, you can learn about whole foods. I knew that stuff all along. And yet having support of other people can make a big difference in that. And uh, yeah. Absolutely. And what was the name of the nutrition? I'm trying to think of it now, but what would, uh, let's talk a little bit about. Oh, the, the restart? Restart. Yeah. The restart. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. that, but also I'd like to kind of define for our audience, define the positive intelligence. And if you, if you don't mind, just kind of Absolutely. talk a little bit about what that. There's lots of conversations here, Don. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. We, we don't have to get too How lost. How long do we have? You yeah, need to explain all of this in 50 minutes or less. <laughs> no, that's why we're going to have you on again. We'll, we'll, we'll touch upon it, at least, you know, kind of define it. And then we can, like I say, we can tear it apart in other, other podcasts because it, there's a, yeah, you're right. There's a lot to it. Yeah. Yeah. So the positive intelligence program is the brainchild of a guy in California called Shirzad Shamin. And he is, oh my goodness. It's, it's taking mindset work, mixing it with science so that it's got all of these studies behind it. And he's created it with a powerful team such that we have an app. There's an app for that. And that's possibly to me, one of the most important pieces of it, because we've all done seminars and weekends and read, you know, read the books that are about mindset and, you know, creating the life that you want and manifesting or what, you know, whatever languaging we want to use to have an app that has daily reminders and little techniques. I'll show you one right now that if you will just pause and we can do this anytime I can do this while I'm driving, just put all your intention, all your focus on two fingers and feel very gently the fingertips touching, touching each other. Do that for 10 seconds. Do it under the table at a stressful meeting or family gathering. And it brings us back to who we are. It brings us back to center. It reminds us to focus where we want things to grow. I have an old friend who, well, she's not old, but I have an old friend who would tell me, focus on what you want to have grow. If I'm focusing on the weeds, then I'm going to grow weeds. Focus on the flowers. Let's focus on the flowers. And it's not to be Pollyanna about it. It's not to pretend that things don't happen that disturb my peace. It's to say, okay, something just happened that disturbed my peace. You know, for instance, my mother was just diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Okay. All right. Let me have my, my feelings about it mm -hmm. and understand that I have, a ch I'm at choice how I respond to it rather than how I react to it. So positive intelligence is a massive tool. You know, all of these things are tools that we add to our mm -hmm. toolboxes. Mm -hmm. This one, this one kind of encompasses all the tools. 
you know, the seven ways of seven habits of highly effective people and the 10 ways to influence people so they don't cut you off in traffic and five <laughs> ways to bounce up and down. And you, we don't, we don't need to remember all those things. We just learn the algorithm for positive intelligence and, and we've got it right there. And yeah, what you say, because we actually did two podcasts on positive intelligence, um, kind of discussing way back um, the different aspects of it and which, you know, like I have tools, I've learned EFT, I've learned Reiki, I've done all this kinds of stuff. And I did the app that, that came with that was so great because it kind of you go through the program and you have daily listening to. And then once you get through the full program, you can choose which section you want to you can listen to and it's just short little clips as reminders in the morning. And while I had the app, I would turn it on while I got in the shower just to start my day with that. Cause once you get in the habit of these things, cause that's, that's, you, we, we know these tools, we know these methods to help us, but if we're not in the habit of using it. Um, so I love the app for that, yeah. that it made yeah. it a no brainer. Like, okay, it's going to talk to me while I'm in the shower. He's going to say the same thing that he said every day, but it's going to set these ideas in my mind to, um, Right, and right. Actually, practice it. Right, exactly. Because we have, I mean, our minds. We are, we are meaning-making machines, and we are thinking only all the time, like sixty thousand thoughts a day, and a lot of those are not very kind. Think of all the the times that we say things to ourselves we would never say to someone we loved, even probably somebody we didn't even know, you know. Mm -hmm. And we're giving ourselves these messages. So positive intelligence helps us to really calm that down and really build the mental muscles, you know, just like we go to the gym so that, you know, I mean, I do my, my 40 push ups a day, you know, and I want to do that with my brain too. So that's what positive intelligence is all about is building that mental fitness. And it, it's so powerful. I just, for my OT license um, that expired June 30th and I got my renewal on June 30th at 9 30 p.m. But um, one of the classes I did was on dementia, but it really delved into the science of the cognition and cognitive deficits. And it talked about neuroplasticity. We used to think, you know, if, you know, if you had a brain injury and you were a kid, well, that your brain could um, rewire. But once you were an adult, that it couldn't happen. So now they understand that neuroplasticity, that your brain can rewire and retrain. And we've learned this with ERP therapy with OCD. You've got, that's what happens with OCD is your brain develops this pathway of mm -hmm. reaffirming this negative thought and that this compulsion that you have to do in order for things to be okay. And the more you perform it, the more that neural pathway strengthens. And so just like, you know, with positive intelligence, we want to strengthen the neural pathways that lead to positive things. And so, you know, whether it's our mindset or whether it's, a, you know, a cognitive deficit that we can strengthen neural pathways. And if we keep doing stuff over and over again that are not leading to that, we keep saying these negative thoughts to ourselves. we've just strengthened those neural pathways of sort of negativity. Um, so it was kind of a wonderful class to take and, and just kind of reminder that the overlap it has in so many different areas and not just dealing with people with dementia, but just our overall cognition. I just, I love everything related to the brain. That's always been my biggest facts, fascination. And, and right on, Gina, I mean, everything that we're doing connects with everything else. You know, when we, when we find the flow, when we find the harmony in our lives, then we see, oh, everything's connected. You know, I choose to eat the way I do and I teach people to eat this way because it's all it's all part of the same package. It's part of the earth. You know, let's eat foods that are from the earth mm -hmm. and, and honor the earth in that. Right. We are part of this whole circle of life. And, you know, there's so many layers and we don't really have predators. Right. So it does not make us the boss of everything. It means we are part <laughs> of the system and we get to respect that and be part of that with all of these conversations. So now you're telling me that Twinkies are not part of the earth, really? If cockroaches won't touch them, <laughs> then I got to be in question. And I love that you brought up Twinkies because when I teach a class on um, on nutrition, I'm always picking on Twinkies. Because really? we used to really love them and my mother did oh, yeah. buy them. That and ding-dongs when I was a and kid. And my mother didn't buy that stuff either. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, my mom did. <laughs> <laughs> you were so lucky. Well, it was new. Like, Don, you know, you grew up in the 60s and 70s, well, yeah. and it was brand new. And well, so ding dongs like... were, were new, and they were like, the, the, oh, my. And here they're called King Dons or something like that. I'm like, why did he put my name to it? You know, I didn't invent them, you know, but, uh, uh, well, you know, and Dr. Smith, the uh, uh, naturopath I work with, he, for the longest time, and I don't think he still has it, but he had a hamburger from McDonald's that he, he had it in a container. But it, I mean, I think he threw it away finally when we moved into this latest office back. But he kept it in the styrofoam container and it and didn't, it, it nothing. didn't change. There was no mold, no nothing on yeah. it. And yeah. it was like, you know, and he, he used it forever in presentations and stuff, you know, but. No, so, that's yeah, it's great. A, I, I had, I had a student in one of my classes that had, had the same thing, had a happy meal that she had had. And she, she was a PE teacher and she would bring it out every year to her students at uh, the schools. And she brought it in to the restart class. And I mean, it's, it's terrifying yeah, <laughs> and yeah. impressive at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Things that don't break down. What is in there that yeah. like, yeah. right. We're, we're supposed to break down, right. Just right. Like, exactly. From and dust and to not, dust. To, not to say that, I mean, some processing is really okay. You know, mm -hmm. when, when I have coconut aminos or when I have um, a little bit of green dragon sauce, you know, that's processed. But I would call that not ultra processed. You know, it's not super, um, super pasteurized milk. And it's not the breads that are made out of cotton fluff. And, um, and, and it's, I'm also really big into meeting people where they're at. Oh, yeah. 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 That's that's, and that's what I loved about the restart program is it wasn't like, you know, you're going to be penalized if you do it wrong. You know, our meetings were about empowering each other and that it's OK that, you, you know, you didn't follow it today because that doesn't do you any good if you sit there and beat yourself up. Yeah, well, yeah that's, exactly. that, you know, that's the point I make out with the patients going through the program with Dr. Smith is, you know, it doesn't help if you're beating yourself up, you're stressing, get overwhelmed because you're not keeping up with the, the exact things that has to be they want you to do. No, I, I we talk about it all the time going at a pace that they can handle, you know, and weaning down off of things versus just going cold turkey. Some people can do that, and there's a lot of them that do, but they really, they, again, because I, I get what I end up getting is somebody when I'm doing a session with them going, I just got so stressed, I can't, I'm not keeping up with it. Probably, and I, and I, and I had yesterday, I had a piece of cake, and I was like, and sitting there beating themselves up over it and it's like no okay you know see that it that it that it happened yes it did and it what probably wasn't the best thing for you but let's let's keep moving towards where you need to go where you want to go right? where you want to go yeah yeah that's exactly right yeah because yeah, you've had many people who are ready to leave the program because they just couldn't keep up with it or they were lying yeah. and not telling them the truth because it didn't want to really let them know and that's not serving anybody if, you know, do that being honest with yourself. And yeah. Yeah. Well, I tend to be the listener. I, you know, I, and I think that's one thing that we kind of miss sometimes is that they want to just go into, well, did you try this and you tried this and did, well, no, what's going on? Wow. You're really upset. So what's, what's going on, you know, and letting yeah. them kind of talk through it. That makes exactly, a big difference. Exactly right. Yeah. We, we get to create the space for people to feel safe and, and heard. And I know that's something that that I struggled with growing up is not feeling heard. And oh, so yeah. that's that's a really important thing for me now is to make sure that my kids feel heard, that the people around me feel heard. It's really. I'm sorry. Were you powerful. talking to me? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I told you this was the comedy hour. No, so right? I've, known, I've known you for a long time, Helen, since I guess I first started homeschooling. So like 20 plus years ago. And yet. In your intro there, I learned so much about you. Like I didn't know you had a <laughs> master's in education, and I didn't, I didn't know when you told the story of climbing to the top of that pole. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I was tapping because just you describing that sends me into total fear and panic because wow. I have that strong of a fear of heights. And it's, it wasn't the climbing up the pole; it was the fact that you stood on top yeah, of it. That was... I'm like, and I just know how empowering that must be. Oh, hundred percent. And yet, like, oh, my God, it was sending me into, like, oh, my God. 
Get down, get down. <laughs> Don't fall. I have lots of wires on me. <laughs> um, yeah, because I mean, I literally like standing on Grandfather Mountain Bridge. You know, it's a bridge. I'm holding the hand of one of my kids. And I just have this intense fear response, just, you know, walking across that, just that openness below me. And it's, yeah, I just have a strong, whatever that is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, did they let you down or did you jump and then you, it kind of catches you at a certain point? Or how, I just kind of. Yeah, it's 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 kind of belaying. Belaying down. down. Okay. I, like Abby did that with Girl Scouts when they went, they climbed. Belaying like, down? What belaying. Do you so you're, you're being oh. guided down. Oh, no, okay. It's not a. <laughs> it's not a bungee. It's not right a bungee before, jump. Right before you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's, it's not a bungee um, jump. It's and, kind of. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know, um, where, is that experience that you're sharing, is that something that you experienced before having children or was that something new after having children? Me? Uh, my fear of heights? Yeah. No, I've, I've had that my whole life. I know my mom had it too because we went to like the highest point in Pennsylvania. I was maybe elementary school age and there were steps that you could see well. So they were just, mm. they were open kind of great steps and I know you know, we, neither of us could make it to the top. So I knew I had that fear even before that. Well, because we lived in Pittsburgh and you had to walk across the bridge to go to Three Rivers Stadium. And that was a challenge for me to do then. So I like, wow. I, as long as I can remember, I've had it and I've, I've done a lot to help overcome it. And <laughs> like when I was a kid, I couldn't climb to the top of that. Um, but when we stayed in some of our timeshare resorts, one of them, I was on the 20th floor and like I made myself go out and walk on the balcony and I, you know, I got to where I can handle things better. Um, but yeah, it, that's a whole nother. Well, and that's, that's a neat thing is that one of the uses for positive intelligence is to use the, the reps, the repetitions, you know, that just like, again, going to the gym, we go to the mental fitness gym mm -hmm. and we do baby steps, baby steps, baby steps to get over, to heal whatever is going on with that fear of heights. If, you know, if you wanted to, and I yeah. know that I've heard stories about people using it to get over a fear of flying, you know, they yeah. got married and they weren't able to go on a honeymoon for 20 years or, you know, where they wanted to, because, she just couldn't get on the airplane. And Don and did that with EFT. He had a client who he did EFT for that very thing. Mm -hmm. And, and um, this was someone he met through Sun City. And it turned out being an old friend of my mother's, which we didn't know at the time. But yeah, I actually got her on a plane. One of the uh, racing teams here allowed me to use their plane. In fact, they didn't even charge me for it. Um, it was in, but we didn't fly anywhere, but they turned uh, the fan, all the internal stuff they turned on um That's and it was perfect. a good it was a good sized plane too um you know so it felt really like we were and we we tapped she had to go to australia because she was from australia and her brother was dying and she mm -hmm. wanted to get back to see him but it's like a 24-hour flight yeah and so um she and she could get on a plane okay but she'd get real sick Oh, you know, just from just the worry would get her literally sick to her stomach. And then she'd start panicking whether she was going to make it to the bathroom in time, mm. you know. And uh, and then she said she because she said it ruined like she went to Paris one time for like a week or two or something like that. And she said she'd start feeling better about halfway through the, the but then start thinking about having to fly back again and it would come right back. So it ruined the whole vacation, you know, so. Yeah, that was that was. Did you like fun. tapped outside the plane and then you got on the steps and didn't you do like? Well, no, that was after. So, so we got on the plane and we did the tapping and and she like I said she flew to Australia, and so we're at this racing team and we're leaving and she left and the lady at the desk said, "Can you do anything for heights?" And I said, "Yeah, sure, you know <laughs> what the heck," and uh, so we did some tapping in her office, but then we went out to the plane. And there's this little platform that's above the plane. Mm. And so I took her out to the, to the platform, but like we got, we opened the door and it was still quite a ways away and she started panicking. So we stopped right there and we tapped and we tapped it down and we'd go a little close. We went about halfway towards it and she started panicking again. We tapped on it. We got to the steps. We got, and we kept having to stop. I got her halfway up the steps and we had to stop and tap. 
we got to the top and of course I walk over to the edge and I'm looking around. She's going, no. And she's like grabbing my shirt to pull me back away from the, the edge. Again, I'm just these thoughts are <laughs> sending me over the edge. <laughs> but it, anyway, I got her tapped. We tapped up there and, and she walked to the edge and went, oh, this isn't so bad. You know, so it was like. Yeah. So it's a similar yeah kind of thing, tapping and, you know, yeah. positive intelligence. You can utilize those tools as, as well. There, there's so many tools out there. Right. And it's. And they all work, you know, everybody, it, it, it just depends on the person, which one works best for them, you know, because mm -hmm. EFT doesn't work for everybody, you know, Reiki doesn't work for everybody, but it works for a lot of people. So, and for yeah. me, it's a combination of kind of all of it, you know, you know, I, I, I love having all the tools, like as, you know, people talk, tapping I tap Reiki all the time. at the same time, you know, <laughs> breathing, <laughs> tapping, well, I, Reiki. I do. I, when, when I have a client doing breath work, mm -hmm. I, will, I will use Reiki with them. And that's, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, I did learn some breath work from you as well. And that is powerful stuff and mm -hmm. something I like to do more of too. There's so many, um, there's just so many tools out there and they're also wonderful to help us. And yet we, like you said, I, I've read all kinds of self-help books over the years. We, we did all that kind of stuff. And yet if we're not practicing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you don't lose it, if you don't lose it, <laughs> if you don't use it, you lose it. Like we're doing now. We're like, no. no, we're losing it. <laughs> Well, and then I would beat myself up, like Gina. You know better. You know that you're what you're doing wrong. You 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 should be. You know, I should on myself. You should be using these tools. You've done this before. You teach this. You know, why are you doing this to yourself? And that's that's just as damaging. Um, yeah, it really it, it undoes all of the benefits that that we've done, and so we get to treat ourselves with the grace and the love, the compassion that we would treat ourselves when we were itty bitty children. So one of the things that I love to teach and, and coach is yes, imagine yourself as a little child. And how would you talk to yourself? And what, what does your little child want to do in this moment that would have them feel heard and seen and loved? So mm. let's play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the, I, I do a lot with, you know, People have lost. I, I call it their 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 voice was stolen or their voice was taken when they were a kid. You know, because the mm -hmm. parents that that won't let them talk, that you know, that uh, won't let them express what's going on in some of the some of the worst situations too. You know, and they they're not allowed to express themselves, and so we work on getting their voice back, taking it back. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, we bottle Very empowering. Th bottle things up inside, and then it turn that's what i say if you don't let it out it's going to turn internal into to d disease i i like yes. to say that yes absolutely yeah. I, yeah, I keep i'm always quoting shrek in the first movie better out than in i always say <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> different context different content but the context is the yeah is yeah because i'm italian and we we share our feelings and we let the feelings out and i told you know i, te I teased don sort of half teasing, half maybe truth that there's no heart disease in per se in my family. It's like the Italians, they have other issues, but we let out our feelings and the stoic Germans, they hold it all inside. And his family history is written with heart disease and just, um, you know, it's right. The manifestation of, uh, of our feelings can manifest into physical illness and different things that in, in our bodies. And so, yeah, there's such an overlap of this, you know, just like the nutrition and, and our mental health that you can't, if you do one without the other, it's um, not well, as effective. And I mean, I was diagnosed with the same thing your mom was, congestive heart failure. When, when you had the heart attack, yeah. When, yeah. And, uh, and just not too long ago, my cardiologist, the cardiologist I was going to wanted me to go to the heart failure clinic. And I, I thought that, that that one. Positive intelligence. Um, oh, my oh. gosh. <laughs> you know, I just I looked at him. I said, who came up with that? You know, I mean, who wants to even think that way? You know? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, even when you did recovery center, even when you did rehab, it was called right. cardiac rehab. You know, it was at least a more positive term that you did yeah but heart failure yes who wants my That's, heart that is fascinating so hey i have heart failure oh <laughs> well you know and they you want to sit down 
<laughs> well, they, they wanted to actually uh, give me medicine to slow my heart down, you know, and to give it a rest. And, you know, um, when I talked to Dr. Smith, he said, no, we want to do it the opposite. We want to build your strengthen that heart, give it, you know, vitality. And, and yeah. you know, yeah. he, he laughed at the heart failure clinic. He's like, my gosh, how, how, how ridiculous is that? You know, the mm -hmm. name it that. Well, when you were recovering from your heart attack, it was walking a fine line. You know, without modern medicine, Don would, oh, not, yeah. be, no, he would not be here today. And yet, you know, he was struggling in the hospital. I mean, he, he was having issues with his blood pressure being too low. And I was there advocating for him. And then the naturopath met me in the parking lot and <laughs> delivered me Kangen water and brought supplements got in. Some water. Got some water. And, <laughs> and Don really turned around after that because his supplements were to support the body, right? And we got that mm -hmm. speech from the doctor. We want to reduce your blood pressure. We want to slow your heart down. We want to do all these things to put less stress on your body. But then you, you know, you continued your medicine as you prescribed. And then working with him after the fact, you know, of supporting your heart. And it kind of was interesting how, you know, naturopathic doctors are their mindset is around, you know, our bodies have the ability to heal itself and how do we look at from the whole picture? And so he's promoting health and the traditional medicine is suppressing things, you know, to prevent problems. They're much more of a put a Band-Aid on it, fix it, um, you know, than, than really, I don't know, more preventative in my opinion. So we had to juggle this balancing act of, okay, you know, what, what parts of the medical world do we need to embrace? What, you know, some medicines you are on, you know, and yet um, it, it was quite a juggling act to, to, to manage that because your family was all concerned that you were going off your medicines. And, well, yeah, and, well, Dr. Smith, would, he was really good about saying he, he never dissed any of my medical doctors, uh, cardiologists. He just, he said, okay, here's what they're trying to do with this medicine. Here's what they're trying to do with this one. And then he'd say, this is what we could do with supplements with this or this or this if you wanted to do it in more natural, but it was always my choice. Yeah, because you know? some of the things, yeah, like lowering your blood pressure, yes, we want to do that. Yet some of the other medicines that were designed to slow your heart down, some of the other heart medicines, you know, we had to decide, okay, do we really want to do that or do we want to do these other things to build your heart, heart up? So there were things that were in contrast, but, you know, there were other things that worked along with it. Um, yeah. It's, and it's kind of being empowered, you know, for your health. It's like after Don was recovering, he'd have all these weird symptoms in his arm. And we went to the ER so many times right after. And, you know, we realized people just don't pay attention that much. You know, so many people go, oh, whatever. You know, he had all these symptoms that they didn't know what to do with. And I'm like, that's because you're so tuned into your body that you are noticing and paying attention to these symptoms that you're having. And, um, like no one explained he was going to have these weird sensations and these weird feelings. And so, you know, of course, anytime he had something, it's like, oh, my God, is this another heart attack? Right. And, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they they have symptoms like whatever. I mean, some people have heart attacks and don't even know it until they get an EKG. And like you've had a heart attack in the past, you know, because they just brush it off and they don't want to go to a doctor. They don't they don't want to look at their own health. So they're really not paying attention to their own body. And that's like with the restart program, you detox, you clean out, and then you introduce foods and you say, okay, let's see how this really affects me. Can, you know, how does this affect my body? Um, Cause we don't realize it. We just. Um, no, and we're all unique. I mean, that's, that's the challenge of, of medicine, right? Why, why we keep practicing medicine because every one of us is unique. So and you know how you catch those people, right? Unique up on them. But um bump. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's another big point there, you know, just about the individuality of things that some people can tolerate some foods and, you know, other, it's not like a one size fits all. And, right. right. Um, and yeah, well, and that's, that's another thing. I mean, there's, so, there's so many layers here and <laughs> yeah. truly, truly, because I was just at a conference and learning more about mast cell activation syndrome and how that can be brought on. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's got to come from somewhere, right? There's always a root cause to all of these things. We may never figure out what they are, but there's always a root cause. And and MCAS can be brought on by Lyme mm -hmm. and or Bartonella or Babesia, which are all Lyme co-infections. And we may not even be aware of ever having been bit by a tick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ticks are moving all over. And and now we know that it doesn't take. 36 hours for a tick bite to be problematic. It can be 15 minutes, people. So that's a whole nother 
there's yeah some yeah they used to say if yeah if you got rid of the tick in a certain amount of time yeah. you were safe or whatever yeah there's just yeah. so much information out there and I look forward to having more conversations with you to kind of narrow in on some of these topics you know the whole foods thing I love talk talking about and hear you talk about you know just the difference between eating you know a whole potato versus a piece of the potato or you know just parts of food um how it's digested differently but um, we can save that for another time sounds perfect <laughs> sounds perfect so Helen, we want to invite you if you have any things you want to share, pe how people can learn more about you and the different programs you do, the positive intelligence, how can they find you? Well, the easiest way is to go to my website, which is creativewellnessnow.com. And my, I can give you my phone number. <laughs> no, that's risky. It's 704-451-3900. So those are uh, and ways to reach you. And we will share these links and things. So for people, you know, whenever they're watching the podcast can can learn more and check out more information about you and, and um, reach out to you if you're interested in participating in these different programs that you offer and um, you. as you expand on different things. So I appreciate you. I appreciate both of you. That was delightful. Yes, yeah, thank we, you. I'm so glad you were here. We've been talking about having you on forever, and I'm so glad we've done it and look forward to you coming on again. Sure. So that's our podcast for today. We hope you have enjoyed this. Please share this with anyone you know who might be interested in these topics that we cover and be sure to check out um, our full list of podcasts. We've been doing this two and a half years on a wide range of topics. And you can see that on our website, Focused Healthy Family. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can also find the audio version wherever you can listen to a podcast and remember how you speak to your children and your family today shapes their future and yours 100 percent